Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23 and it is time for a bit of practice here in Valencia. Of course coming up is the Valencian race for the Ace Academy Cup where I also want to practice and get better on board. I obviously use the Ducati for that but I couldn't resist the chance to use Luca Marini on board the Repsol Honda. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, it's not exactly Luca Marini, but Sergio23 has worked his magic and he's created Marrow's helmet for this game. It looks absolutely fantastic. He's even chucked the number on there as well. So when you chuck on the Repsol Honda's test livery, it more or less looks like the modern Moda GP. Of course, it's a little bit different, of course it is, but it looks great, and if for the immersion you change the colour of the boots, the gloves, and of course change Luca Marini's helmet, and you've convinced yourself you've got a near enough representation of what the VR46 rider will be doing on the Repsol Honda. But of course, the important part today is not necessarily just the livery. I wanted to show off what Sergio's done here because it deserves full credit, so a big thank you to the Belgian Ace. However, I do want to try and practice a bit in preparation for the Ace Academy Cup coming this Monday for our final round of the Ace Academy Cup in MotoGP 23. Do not fear, do not worry, there will be more Ace Academy Cups coming very soon. It, perhaps it may even be an Ace Academy Championship. All I can suggest to you is that you get subscribed, join the Discord server and keep an eye on the upcoming announcements for future Dr. Ace Cups. However, I digress for now because we need to focus on practice. Not a combination tyre I usually tend to use now is the medium front with any rear. Medium front, I just find it lacks a lot of feeling. It hasn't really got the, 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 the sense of vibration in there compared to the soft or the hard. I also find that the medium degrades quite quickly as well compared to the hard or the soft. Which doesn't really make sense because you think the soft would degrade quickest, then medium, and then of course the hardest. But I don't know, I just don't particularly like the medium tyres. I used to, and I used to use them all the time, but now that we've been getting more competitive in the career mode, competitive against the aces, uh, medium tyres just don't come up. Uh, of course, if you see in the Sepang race from last week, or at least it was uploaded this week, you'll know that I chose the soft option rear simply because I just didn't want to use the medium rear, and that backfired massively. It was a huge gamble, which did not pay off, where I've got to learn my lesson. So maybe... I'll try out the medium rear, but I would like to think that the soft option rear would last the distance here in Valencia. The tyre doesn't particularly get too hot. I'm not overly aggressive on the acceleration, so I can't see it really happening in today's video. But who knows what's going to happen when we get to Valencia on Monday. Of course, Valencia being a very special track for me now, having my name etched onto the flag from recent uh, memory, of course, when MotoGP Authentics hooked me up with a gift. I really like this circuit and I have got nothing but excitement for Monday's final cup race. So across the line, we do actually improve from whatever lap time I set prior. I believe the lap time I set before this was in the video where I showed you the difference between TCS3 that I was using at the time to TCS2, which I actually moved up to. Now it's a little bit different because we're actually using TCS1. So, from TCS 3 to 2 to 1, TCS 1 is by far the best feeling in the game. And when I first tried it, I found that the bike was a little bit aggressive and it was too, ex too strong in the acceleration. Now it's perfect. It's, it's something I've uh, adapted to nicely now and I've really fathomed it out and got the feeling. So, I'm hoping for some good lap times here. Um, not too concerned regarding race pace. I think 127s is roughly where I'll be. We had a very small practice session a few days ago with the likes of Sacred Meerkat, Jackhammer, Jakey and uh, I believe Cheshire Charlie and Gilzo were there as well. This was not long after the race on Monday which of course the tyre gamble was a big mistake in the Sepang race so everyone had a laugh at my expense. But uh, from this point onwards I'm going to hope we can get into the 126s. I can't see why not already so far a 127.2 but for this circuit it's very much like Sepang. The only difference being that uh, I, I love the circuit of Valencia, I think it's terrific. I know a lot of fans want to see it gone from the finale of MotoGP, but I, I happen to love it. I always have done. I think it's a great finale. Going there as a viewer, I've never been, but I understand because it's flat, you can see everything. So apparently it's great for the spectators, which I actually see a quite a bit of empty seats in the distance there for Luca Marini's time trial. 
but uh, yeah, I digress for that for now, and uh, focusing on Valencia itself, I love this circuit, however, I'm just not particularly strong at it. Now, if I compare myself to the like of JQ, Meerkat and Hammer, then of course, uh, Jack, I'm apologies, of course I'm not going to be very good. But compared to the rest of the aces, I think I'll hold up my own, so we could very much see a battle for the final position on the rostrum. Hopefully, I'll be featuring that battle, but we'll see how it goes. There's a couple of points in this circuit where I am weak. I, I will confess I'm transparent with you guys, I always am and always will be, but... There's a couple of parts in this circuit where I just find I could be stronger. Turn 8, I feel a little bit weak there, a little bit exposed. I don't feel too bad here into turn 10, but it's the exit speed, getting the... Oh, I've been too tight to Apex that time. But getting the exit speed going into here, sometimes I might be a little bit lax. And then again on the brakes here for the Champy Headoffs corner. Now for this final part, of course, it's a mystery for many because it's a difficult left-hander that goes on for a long, long time. And then where to break? I find that I might be a little bit conservative on the break going into that final corner. I just think maybe I'm a little bit too tentative. I could probably hit the break harder, but I think I then go for a fine line of risking crashing every other time we enter that corner to just getting through there and being complete. So a little bit nervous going into the final corner. I think that's where I will be attacked. Into the doing corner, into turn three, you don't feel too bad, but on the right hander here, again, maybe a little bit too relaxed, a little bit too casual on the break. So those are a couple of points I need to work out on. I'm gonna do at least, what, let's say 15 laps. I'm gonna, yeah, okay, we'll get aim for 15 laps because I do wanna show you the helmet and the number in a closer detail towards the end of the video. So if you wanna see a better look at that, check out the latter stage of the video but uh, into the left hand side still utilizing the medium front and the soft rear lap times are quite consistent a difference between five seven tenths not bad but we are getting the feel for it surprisingly lap two was our best and since then we've not really come that close i did drop down to power sitting two because interestingly i think that's the biggest part i think i'll be able to qualify first or second row regardless i'm pretty close to those positions every time but for the race pace something i'm always working on i, I want to be good in the race because of course motor gp 23 career mode you know how much we struggle in the qualifying i mean you don't see the qualifying but you see i always start quite low down simply due to the lack of time i would say maybe not the time but also the the lack of experience against the AI difficulty because the 120% difficulty for two seasons now seems to be getting harder even if our bike is improving even if we're dropping down to TCS1 to find additional speed it seems that their lap times are getting beyond ridiculous in Mugello in the previous round which was absolutely crazy Alicia Spargo did a 141 in the Italian circuit in Q1 and then after that I didn't see the qualifying results because unfortunately you can't after that Takarakagami and um, I was going to say Pedro Costa, Paulo Spargo and Augusto Fernandez were then on the front row in that order. So, yeah, go figure in the uh, the Mugello GP. I think that was just very unfair. And then everyone crashed. So I guess everything worked out towards the end. So still very much consistent lap times. I I don't mind the feeling in the medium front, but what I'm anticipating is after what? Let's say let's maybe chuck in another lap after this one. And then let's give it a try with the hard front or potentially the soft front. I think the soft front will ultimately be the best. But the difference between the soft and the hard is not too much in this game in the sense of speed. Uh, the grip is very good for both. It just means that with the hard you can break really aggressive and really late. Soft option just glides around the corner. So yeah, back up to the low 127. As long as we don't disappear into the 128s, I think I'll be relatively content towards the end of today's video and of course guys don't forget to subscribe i will implore you to uh, hit the subscribe button at this point because cl clearly you must be enjoying it still be watching i certainly hope you are if, uh, if you have any ideas or recommendations for a future video let me know in the comments section down below i do have a very exciting video coming up soon which uh, i'm rather excited to share with you it's my uh, list of tracks in ranking order of what i enjoy to the ones i don't i'm very excited to bring that to you we'll have that uploaded relatively soon i just can't make my mind up on a couple of tracks i've actually bounced back and forth to try and get a bit of experience this is one of them as well as a matter of fact so this extra 
video here today will determine its ranking in Dr. Ace's list of tracks within MotoGP 23. That also includes historical circuits as well. And uh, finally, another note as well, which is a pretty exciting video to do, is uh, just a bit of my experience of some late game tips and tricks from the Doctor. I'm very excited to show that one for you as well, so definitely get subscribed. But this is the final time we go into the Champieros corner with the medium front and the soft rear into the final corner for the Adrian Campos corner. Tight as you like to the apex, get on the power for a bit of power setting three. Are we going to improve? It might not. Across the line. Yes. Uh, yes, we did. Well then, we've just acquired seven decent laps with the medium front soft rear, but this is the tyre combination that I am particularly looking forward to. This is the soft front. I'm not going to change the rear tyre in today's video. I don't really think it's necessary. The soft option doesn't get particularly warm and it doesn't overheat or rip to shreds. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, that can stay as it is. Little bit deep into the doing corner, forced to drop shift down to first. I know some of you in the comments are already raging, but bear with me because I think that's worked out rather well. The first lap on the double soft combination is already materialising into three additional tenths gained, which would put us into the 126s. Therefore, ooh, I lost a bit of time there. Okay, a bit misleading. Thought I'd lost a bit of time, but we actually gained an additional tenth. This could well and truly be. The one at 26. Ooh, that's deep, that's deep, that's deep! Oh. Apologies. I did mention that turn 8 could be uh, a bit of a corner for me to make a faux par, and it seems to have happened here this time around. That's disappointing. A little bit, uh, just a small error, just a little mistake was all it took to send this lap time from good to bad, from hero to zero with the man with the one and the zero, Luca Marini, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, question for you. When do you think Luca Marini will win a race with that Honda? Will it ever come? Will it be a podium and that's all it be? Who knows? I just have a good feeling with Luca, Joan, Johan and Taka. I think uh, all four of them will do well on the Honda now that we have a, a clear vision for Honda. Of course, they've been stuck in a, in a bit of delusion let's say I don't think it's delusion but it's a case of that they didn't want to admit that Marquez is not going to win again on the Honda maybe not just a race but a championship and I think they were still trying to develop the Honda for Mark which now he's gone so now they need to completely rebuild from scratch with fresh young riders maybe not the Owen Zarco he's quite old at this point but good experience to bring to the forefront of the uh, RC213V, so as far as I'm concerned, I think it's extremely exciting for Honda. Great stuff for Luca Marini. I think things can only get better for the Japanese brand. I do want to talk about that in a future, maybe in a future video where we talk some more real-life MotoGP, but that's just my five cents, as it worth. Into turn 11. Down by two tenths of a sec- oh, by two tenths of a second, rather. We have a chance of improving on this lap. Luca Marini, VR46 on the leathers. Of course, it isn't in this game, but uh, <laughs> it should be. It'd be great if you could just add that to your own suit. But three tenths of a second, four tenths of a second into the final corner. Lost a bit of time. Let's bump it back up to power setting three. Four tenths of a second gained across the line. There is your first 126.802. Now, regarding the lap times, we've had a steady improvement since lap four. Just moving in the right direction here. Bit deep that for the doing corner. Actually forgot to downshift a second there. I think that's probably why I ran it a bit deep. Can we still claw back a bit of time to get into the 126s again? It's uh, certainly a question, but uh, will it give an answer at the end of this lap? I think it will, but will it be the answer we want? Two and a half tenths now. Three tenths of a second down. Downshifting to first again. Oh, I can feel the comments already. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> it will happen again. No, it will happen again. It's guaranteed. Into the left. Two and a half. Three tenths. You know, I am tempted to start dropping down to second uh, power. Oh, I just cut the apex. I tell you now, that is a corner that's going to catch a lot of players out in our Ace Academy race on Monday. Just keep an eye on the race when I upload it in the week. You'll see a lot of track limit warnings. We may even see 
some long lap penalties. As long as it isn't me, I'm, I don't mind. <laughs> but I do suspect there will be some penalties. Eight tenths of a second down. Ignore this lap. Why is it whenever I say we've got a steady improvement, I end up messing, messing it up on the next one? Embarrassing stuff. Good to know that the soft option front is not overly hot, though. Not entirely sure if it's an asymmetric tyre either. Something I, better sh I should probably check, but uh, I'm curious. The middle of the tyre, certainly the fat part, is getting warm. Ooh, just a little bit eager on the rear brake there. So he's eager to, uh, easy to do that if you're a bit too eager. Just get the rear sliding out, looking like Marquez himself. Actually use the shoulders out preset rather than uh, Marquez's uh, body out preset for the rider angle. I still don't think we would have had a good as lap time as we did when I cut the apex earlier on. Or at least when I hit the uh, outside of turn 8. I think we were up higher, so we have potential of maybe improving a bit more. Oh, that's a bit deep. Did not think we could get on the kerb there. If you get the rear wheel on the kerb, it just slow you down. Bit of an e-sport tactic for you. Dropping down to power sitting two. This is working out well. Not good enough going into turn 11. Easy to lose the front there if that uh, soft front gets too hot. I'll have to manage that as we go. But into the right-hand side here. Beautiful corner for turn 12. I do like that corner. In ride 5, if you touch that apex where I've just done there with the uh, MotoGP bike, it's an instant crash, regardless. No matter how you touch it, instant crash. So it's good to finally take that line again, but out of the final corner. Back into power setting 3. Nah, still into the 127s. That seems to be our potential, doesn't it? Now, I, I, I do want to do 15 laps, that's my target for today, so I, I might make this one my last one, depending on how the feeling goes. And I'd like to try the hard just quickly before we end the video. I think I'd have to do, uh, well, I'd, yeah, I would have to do some more time with the hard front, perhaps, but I'd probably want to get back over to my Ducati, because, of course, that's what I'll be using on Monday's race. Just really wanted to use Luca Marini. I actually really wanted to get the Repsol Honda. I was hoping that RNG would bless me with the Repsol Honda. I do really like the Honda bikes in this game. Of course, the, all of the bikes feel pretty good. Uh, I would say the Ducati, for me, feels the worst. I know it's kind of ironic, but I just don't have that much sensation with the Ducati. I feel the other bikes give me more feeling. I, f I find the Honda is incredible on the front end. You can hold that front end for a long time before it decides to finally give up. Mm, I hope I haven't just jinxed myself. <laughs> I was looking at that front tyre then and the feeling was going ever so slightly. But we're alright. <laughs> don't panic. But for the... Ooh, tight to the apex again. Now onto the left hand side, keep on pushing and into the left hander. Oh that's deep, that's tremendously deep, oh I can't end it there can I? No I guess not, and if, but if we go across the line how much time are we going to be losing on this straight? 28,000, 33,000, it's not too much to worry about, let's, okay let's finish on a high then instead. Not a bad lap time I guess for a race but it's not going to cut it for qualifying. I think uh, Meerkat's already into the 125s. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Can you believe that? And I don't think Jakey's too far behind him either. I did look at the time trial just before making this video, and I believe... Quesadilla is somewhere around the 126 mids. I can't remember if it's a 4 or a 5. He's somewhere midway. This lap time's not going to be good either, is it? Lost three tenths. Three and a half. We might be able to salvage a bit of time here into the left hander for turn eight. Unless I pull an Iagor and bin it. I'd have to bin it a bit earlier than that, wouldn't I? Yeah, this lap time's not good. And the soft is finally beginning to look a bit worse for wear. Look how red it's going into the right hander for turn 11. Whoa, like a tan backside. Look how red that is. Steady on. And that's deep into turn 12. I actually tried to go a bit harder on the brakes there. Something I can criticise myself on is sometimes I'm a bit too gentle and a bit too smooth. Doesn't always work out that, but uh, to conclude the soft option escapade, let's get across the line and let's give out a try to the hard front. And there is the livery, by the way. Look how beautiful that is. Stunning. So here we go then. This is the combination I'm suspecting to be very solid. A hard front and a soft Rear tyre, I thought I just messed up already into the Hoya Martinez Aspar corner, not quite. Ooh, two tenths gained in the first split. 
looking quite solid. Well, it's not in a split yet until until we get to before. Yeah, there it is. Again, two tenths of a second. Not bad. Oh, I've got to say it. <laughs> the, the feeling on the brakes with the hard front. I feel like Mark Marquez. That's stunning. That's really good. Two and a half tenths now. Three tenths of a second. Ladies and gentlemen, could be looking at 127.4 to conclude this one. Up by three and a half tenths of a second. Beautiful. Little bit deep, but it's okay. Lost a bit of time, but I think that's just a bit misleading. Because, of course, as you get back on the power, that's when it comes to fruition that you're still doing a decent lap. Oh, the hard front feels magnificent in those tighter corners. Really solid. This is going to be a tight comparison between the soft front and the hard front. The two front tyres offering a lot of feeling. Just a quick drop down to power setting two there, just to help me in this final corner. Looks to be working as we break late and gentle into the left-hander. Onto the power. Oh, I'm a bit eager on the power there. Just pushed me too far over towards the kerb. And we only gained... No way! We only gained like 35,000 of a second. That's really disappointing. Oh, I blew that one, didn't I? We had four tenths on that lap. Well, there's certainly potential for when we go into the qualifying on Monday. So, for the last lap then, guys, let's see if we can end on an extra high. I will be back to do more time trial with the Ducati. But as far as the RC213V goes, this will be... Oh, this oh no, I lost the front! Well, I'm not ending on a crash. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, we got one lap then. One lap to do the business. Can we finish in lap 15 with a positive lap time? This is going to be slightly misleading now because we've had a crash since the 15th lap. So technically this is, or this was the 15th, this is now the 16th lap. That's disappointing. I, I just went too tight to the apex. Uh, able to break too early as a matter of fact with the additional braking power. Definitely going to have to come back and look at these two tyres. I think what I'm going to have to do as well is have a look at some of my old time trials. See what times I was doing and just compare it with TCS1. And then perhaps a better tyre combination. Because there's a lot of laps I've done in the past where I just use medium front, medium rear. Just start the video, do 10 or 15 laps and then finish it. And now with additional power, we're not going to improve, are we? This is not going as planned. Three tenths. Oh, it's not going to happen. I even thought power setting two would help us out, but I don't think it's going to work. So onto the power, into the left. Can we do it? We're, getting, we're just down a tenth. If I break late enough, with that extra gumption and pizzazz, uh, pizzazz, sorry, we might have a chance. Power setting three. Go on. It's close. Is it enough? Mm, no, it's not enough, unfortunately. Oh, well. So those are my lap times on screen right now. Excuse the immersion breaking. I didn't change my name or the location of my nationality, so apologies. But it's still Luca Marini if you uh, only look at the number 10. <laughs> but guys, there it is. Thanks for watching the video so far. Of course, don't go anywhere because if you want to see a better look at Sergio 23's recrea uh, recreation of the helmets of the Luca Marini, then you can check out now. But as far as I'm concerned with those lap times, not bad, but I think we can do better. I I think if we really gave it enough time, maybe a good another 30 laps or something, we could possibly get into the 125s. That would be the next step. But to be honest, that's four, seven tenths of fine. That's a lot of work. But we'll get there in eventually. Who knows? So there is the number 10 created beautifully and lovingly by Sergio23. Big thanks to the Belgian Ace. Looks absolutely stunning. And of course, most importantly, the fantastic helmet as well. This one is a stunner. Really like the look of Lucas and Joanne's helmets this year. Can't wait to see them in the next game. But guys, thanks for watching. This has been Dr. Ace for you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Big thanks to uh, Sergio23 for the helmet and number. Upon that note, guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.